As a private investigator, everything you do has to be legal and it has to be ethical, but you can't do everything that's legal and ethical. Hi, this is Larry Kay with ShadowAnyone.com. Look, here's the thing, and this is important. If you've been in the business for a while, you already know this. If you're just starting out or getting into the business, it's important you learn this, especially maybe if you're at that cru crucial phase where you've gotten your license uh, and now you're getting clients because the problem is, as difficult as it is to get clients, and I have a book that can help you with that, How to Make Money as a Private Investigator, but as you're following the instructions in that book, or whatever you're doing, feeling in the dark on your own to get clients, whatever you're doing, you can, if you don't understand the lesson I'm about to teach you, blow it after you get that client. Because the idea is, especially with law firms, you, you work for them once, they like you and your work, and they hire you over and over again. So don't miss this or you will blow it on the very first case you have. So the thing is, attorneys, especially all clients, but let's talk attorneys, have a different tolerances of risk and they have different things they like and they don't like. So you may have a bunch of things you can do to get the information that they need for their case and they've told you what they need. Maybe it's a witness interview, maybe it's uh, some surveillance, whatever it might be that they need, but they're going to have certain attorneys are going to have certain restrictions. So for example, you may work for attorney, an attorney who does not want any covert recordings. It may be legal where you are to do a covert recording, and I'm not talking about bugging a room, but a, a, a conversation you're a party to. That may be legal for you to record that, but and it is ethical for you to record that if it's legal in your area, but the attorney may not want that. Uh, likewise, surveillance may be something that they frown upon. Pretext may not be something they want used. And, and here's the reason why, and, and we can all understand this the more we look online or look at the news or in this crazy summer of 2020, there's all sorts of what they call optics, how things look. And every single day, some atrocious video comes out that we are all outraged at, and we just rise up with self self-righteous indignation about how could this person do such a thing. And then 24 hours, the whole story comes out or the whole video comes out and you realize, oh, that's not what happened at all. Well, that's an example of how the optics can affect things. How things look matters and attorneys know this. So when they're going to bring the evidence that you collect before a judge and certainly before a jury, but now think about this for a moment, they see these judges over and over again. And they don't want to have a reputation with the judge as someone who's doing things that are maybe borderline or appear to be unsavory. Uh, so they may have restrictions on, on uh, sources and methods you can use to, to get the information they want. Uh, likewise, especially before juries, if they go before juries, sometimes you get a person on the jury that just thinks this sneaky private investigator, who do they think they are? They ain't the police. You know what I'm saying? So... The attorneys understand these things and they have criteria that they want you to stay within this circle of, of your uh, sources and methods. That's a very important thing to know. You will have other attorneys that are more you know, wild about these things or a little more, uh, they'll stretch the bounds. Uh, and, you know, so you work for one of them and they'll tell you, look, I want you to go in and get co covert footage of this interior of this manufacturing facility or I want you to get whatever and of course again stay legal stay ethical I'm working on the presumption that the attorney is not going to ask you to do anything illegal uh, and if they ask you to do something that's unethical or you question take a stand on that don't be that guy don't do it just for the money maybe you have an example in your working career that you want to share with others you can drop it in the comments I do want to point out, and I keep forgetting to say this, uh, I do have a free report over at shadowanyone.com titled, If You Want to Be a Private Investigator, Give Up Unless You Do These Three Things. I keep forgetting to share that, <laughs> and I've had some videos that, that have become uh, more popular than, than my average videos, and uh, oh, I keep forgetting to mention it. I feel this video probably will not be one of my most popular ones because it's really for those serious 
people working in the industry. And there's arguably not a whole lot of us out there, right? Uh, there are a whole lot of people who are interested in just one little dirty trick or hack or something to make them feel like they know what they're doing. But for those of us who are really out there working in the real world, even semi-retired like I am, uh, this is the type of thing you need to know. In the meantime, as I always remind you, do the right thing, even if it's the hard thing.